this is Adam Jensen. I'm a big fan of Crazy Horse Gaming. I didn't ask for this, but I'll check it out. Hey everybody, Mikey from Crazy Horse Gaming bringing you another quick video. First off, I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. I hope you all had a great Christmas and a great Boxing Day. At current time of recording, this is the day after Boxing Day, so the 27th of December. And because, obviously, with the Christmas break we haven't got a huge amount of content up on the site, I figured I'd bring you a quick video. Uh, basically just covering some of the, the pickups I've got over the month of December. Now, obviously, I got uh, had a great Christmas, got plenty of gaming goodies on Christmas, so I'll cover them in a minute. But there was also a fair few pickups that I got before and during the run-up to Christmas. So I thought I'd go through them first, show you a few things I've got, and then also show you what I got for Christmas, some of the great stuff. I uh, had an awesome Christmas. I hope you guys had an awesome Christmas as well. Uh, drunk too much, ate too much, and basically played video games too much. So kind of consider this in place for a few of the videos that we've missed over the Christmas period. Uh, so it should be a quick video, like I said, show you the pickups I got. First off, I will get into what I got on the run-up to Christmas. So, got a few Xbox 360 games, which were going pretty cheap. Managed to pick up the Batman Arkham Origins. Sorry about the glare there, people. Uh, might be a bit better. The Batman Arkham Origins uh, video game. This is the special edition that comes with the Steelbook, and I think it's two or three lots of DLC. Uh, the steelbook's on my shelf behind me. But yeah, I managed to get that brand new off eBay for 10 quid, which I thought was a, a pretty decent bargain. I also picked this up because I uh, never played this. I've heard interesting things about it. Some people have hated it. Some people have liked it. But with the recent release of its sequel, I figured I'd give this go. So I picked up Bayonetta. Again, fairly, fairly cheap. I think I picked this up for about 6 quid, which isn't bad. I haven't played it yet, but I'm looking forward to giving that a try. Also picked up... Again, this is a game which I've been a big fan of the franchise for uh, quite some time. Uh, the franchise was released in, I believe, in 1983. So, making it about the same age as me. Uh, followed it. It's uh, an anime. Well, it's a manga and anime sort of thing. I loved the original uh, manga film and the anime series that they brought out. And I had this game once before and 100%ed it and then sold it like an idiot before I uh, really got into my collecting and decided I wanted to get it back. So that is Fist of the North Star Ken's Rage. Kind of like a, a Dynasty Warriors style game. Uh, really enjoyable, really fun. You take on the uh, where well, you play as multiple characters, but obviously you get to play as the main character, Ken. Uh, yeah, I had this before. 100% of it went all the way through and decided I wanted to get this back to have in my collection because it was a really fun game. And with that, I also picked up Fist of the North Star Ken R Killer. Ken's Rage 2. Again, I do apologise for the... Uh, Glare there from the screen. Uh, but yes, Kendra is too, so I haven't played this yet, but I'm looking forward to getting to it. I managed to pick them off up for 15 quid, I believe it was, which I don't think is a bad price, really, for 360 games. So, yeah, not too bad. Now, the Monday before Christmas, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, I think it was the Monday before Christmas. Uh, both me and Liam, we took a trip down to uh, Sheffield Town Centre uh, for a bit of game hunting, we called into a game store called Playtime because usually they have some good deals on. They've got some great retro stuff there. Uh, it's a really great shop. There's a, a quick shout out there for Playtime. Um, but yeah, so we went in there, got a few things. First off, I picked up a few Dreamcast games. I got Power Stone for the Dreamcast. Just spin that round. Yeah, an old Power Stone. I uh, don't know much about this game, but it says on the back, it is the 19th century, a romantic era when superstitions and legends are alive and powerful dreaming of a vast fortune adventure. Seek the legendary Power Stone. Magical stones that will make any wish come true. Power Stone is an all bad action game where anything goes. It features total interactivity, climb a pillar, lift a chair, or even run up the wall. Jaw-dropping graphics with fast-paced gameplay includes eight different characters with unique abilities and fighting characteristics. So it looks like a fairly interesting game there. So I expect to see that coming up in a throwback, uh, throwback Tuesday. Oh, I forgot the name there. I do it every piss and week. So why I forget, I don't know. So there's one. MDK2. Again, on the Dreamcast. Uh, 
I remember this being some kind of platform, I think I could be wrong, or some kind of action game. Uh, never played it when it first came out. Either MDK or MDK2. Kurt and his amazing sniper helmet are back. This time, he's teamed up with the genius Dr. Hawkins and Max, a six-legged gun tort and robotic dog. Together, they must use their unique abilities and warped attitude to sneak out... To out-sneak, sorry. Outblast and outthink their enemies as they attempt to reclaim the Earth from a vile alien menace. So... Probably an action comedy type game, I imagine. Again, expect to see that coming up in a throwback Tuesday. And I've got a, a huge group of games on the throwback Tuesday, so there'll be uh, many of these coming. Another one for the Dreamcast, because these are on off, I think. There was one batch I got which was 3 for 15, and another batch which I believe was 2 for a tenner, which I thought was an absolute bargain. Uh, so we've got Soul Fighter, again, on the Dreamcast. Yeah, another game I haven't played. So I managed to get a few games for the Dreamcast to uh, build out my collection a bit there, which is quite cool. Let's have a look. Soul Fighter is a free Roman, real-time 3D beat-em-up based in a medieval setting. This true next-generation game design offers you a choice between arcade mode and adventure mode. You select to play one of three characters, Atlas, Xiaomi or Orion, each with its own strengths and weaknesses, and each offering over 100 distinctly different motion captured moves. You fight against 44 half human, half beast enemies across five worlds, spanning 12 levels to save the kingdom of Goma from its evil spell. So, a kind of Street Fighter style beat em up game from the look of it. Awesome. Looks really interesting. Looking forward to playing that. So, that covers the Dreamcast games. I've got a few more games from what I got from Playtime. Uh, first up, again in the offer, is a Sega Saturn game, which I haven't really played much of. I think I played a bit of it on the PC when it was out, but it was also available on many multiple consoles. I've got this for the Mega Drive, uh, again, haven't played it, and that is Theme Park. So this is a, a groovy type game where obviously you create your own theme park, manage it, a bit like some of the other Sim style games. Uh, I believe this is from... Bullfrog, so the same guys behind things like uh, Theme Hospital and other awesome titles which I can't think of at the moment. But yeah, that should be like a, a fun game, a, a kind of a sim management style theme park creation game. Uh, it's meant to be really good. Never played it. Looking forward to that. So again, hopefully you'll see that on another Throwback Tuesday. So coming soon. Managed to pick up a Jaguar game while at playtime. This was the last one in the, the deal. Uh, this came in one of the deals, I think it was the two for a tenner, I think. And this is a box Jaguar game, which is really cool, which is Flip Out. Looks like it's some kind of uh, puzzle game. Congratulations, uh, oh sorry, Alien Counters of a Flipping Kind. Congratulations, Earthling, the citizens of planet Fromage have invited you to join their great tile flipping festival. An honour of the highest sort, the flipping influences their customs, their eating, their habits, and even their vacations. Solve maddening puzzles while watching for the mischievous aliens who think confusing you is part of the fun. If they weren't so cute, you'd wring their necks if they had them. Nine wacky areas with multiple games in each area, four difficulty levels from normal to psychotic, twelve kinds of crazy aliens. So we've got a kind of a, a a tile flipping puzzle type game there which should be interesting to play uh, so again looking forward to picking that up and to get a box jaguar game at such a dirt cheap price i uh, can't argue with that in the slightest comes with the manual which is uh, really cool really surprising so as well as the original registration cards for the atari jaguar which is very groovy a uh, nice bit of gaming history and that brought my total for the Jaguar games up to two at that point. Obviously, um, get this back in the box. Obviously, at that point, I'd only had Kasumi Ninja, which we'd already covered before. And for when we did the Versus First Days on the Jaguar, I had to borrow a few games for that because I didn't have any games. But there we are. It's another one to watch out for. While I was there, I took those to the counter. And obviously, the guy at the counter, we've been in a couple of times, so he recognised me. And he says, well, one sec, fellas. Uh, I've got some more Jaguar games at the back, which are, you know, I've got on the Amazon site for sale. But if you're interested, you can buy them here and I'll take them off sale. Why don't you have a look through them all? And he brought them out. 
there wasn't anything in particular interest that I was hoping to get there, but while he was there, he went, I'll also throw you a curveball. And he presented me with a boxed NES game, which is in great condition. I wanted, uh, I think it was 28 quid for it, which I didn't think was bad. Uh, so I ended up paying that. It's got to be the most I've paid for an NES game yet. But a boxed with manual and everything. I know this game, and I know it's terrible. Uh, but it's a game that I, want, I wanted in my collection. I wouldn't mind of having in my collection. And that is Noah's Ark on the NES. Now, those of you who watched the Angry Video Game Nerd would have seen him do a video on this uh, a while back and showed you just how god-awful this game is. But it's something that I've been looking to have in my collection for a while now. And I've decided, because I don't want to hog all the fun uh, to my scent in playing this game, that this is going to feature in a Rush Hour video, which we've done one previously. We did one for Halloween, and it's been way too long since we could get another one uh, up on the site. But that's coming which will be me and Liam play this for an hour and see how far we can get. So this will be coming up in a rush hour sometime in the new year, as soon as we can get it done. Now, that brings me to the end of the things I got on the run-up to Christmas. So now it's all the gaming goodness that I picked up on Christmas Day. Now, this isn't everything I got on Christmas, obviously. I got many of other stuff, you know, the usual socks, aftershaves, body sprays, things like that. Uh, other random geeky stuff. Uh, but on this, I just want to concentrate on the video games that I was gifted and I'm really appreciative for because it was awesome. And first off, we're going to start with the biggest thing in the collection, which I got. And I was really surprised at this. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit this in camera, but I'm going to attempt. Here we go. So, I have a boxed Atari Lynx. You can see that. I can just squeeze that in shot with my face. As you can see, it's quite big. Boxed Atari Lynx, huge box. Uh, the Atari Lynx, as I believe it was the first colour handheld uh, console. So, I think kind of like the Game Gear uh, on the earlier and a bit more primitive. I believe this was out around about the same time as the Game Boy, I think. But, let's get it out of the box. This is the actual unit. This is the first model of the Atari Lynx, I believe. I think they brought out two, well, they did bring out two models. I think this is the first one. The second one was a lot smaller. This is a huge unit. It takes six AA batteries. Uh, it was never really popular, the Atari Lynx. Uh, I don't know whether it was just because it was too expensive or... Just too big, but you know, the other ones, the Game Boy and the Game Gear, did kind of dominate the uh, handheld market compared to the Atari Lynx. Obviously, we know the Game Boy dominated everything when it comes to handheld. But yes, this is a, the box describes it, a portable color entertainment system with high definition graphics and multiplayer capability, four channel sound, batteries included. Well, there was no batteries, because obviously, this isn't new, obviously. Uh, but let's read the back here. Designated for everyone, or designed, designated, designed for everyone, anywhere, anytime. The Atari Lynx is the world's first complete portable color entertainment system. Lynx's 16-bit graphics engine provides outstanding color, dramatic graphics, fax action, and exceptional depth of gameplay. Lynx's 32-bit audio processor brings out the realistic sound in each game for a maximum for maximum, don't know where I got the air from, enjoyment. Directional joypad, built-in 8-directional joypad, full-color LCD display, large built-in high definition for color LCD display, provides dynamic graphics and up to 16 colors at one time for a palette of over 4,000 colors. Wow. So yes, the first 16-bit color handheld system has a multiplayer Comlinx cable, or you can buy that so you can hook it up to other Lynxes and play multiplayer games, headset jack, volume control, function buttons, pause, restart, options 1 and 2 used in various game functions, and or flip. Rotates the image on the screen 180 degrees for right or left hand dis uh, display. So you can press a flip button which will flip the screen upside down. So if you're left handed or right handed you can have it whichever way you want. Which I think is a pretty cool feature. I don't think any other handheld console do that. Even today, I'm not sure. Could be wrong. But there we are. Yes, so a boxed Atari Lynx, which was absolutely awesome. And I was well chuffed to get that. Couldn't believe it. So continuing on that uh, tangent, we have Steel Talons. Again, for the Atari Lynx. Boxed Steel Talons in great condition. Uh, this looks like it's a 
helicopter style combat game. It looks pretty primitive to be fair, but you know, it is old. So sensors detect incoming missiles. Your AT-1196 Steel Talons combat helicopter has the onboard computer and firepower to meet the challenge, but can you? That's the description of the game. Take that and look. I think pick it up, but there's like a shot of the graphics there of what you'd expect from the game. So it's a fairly decent condition box. Uh, still got all the, the innards in it, to all like the cardboard goodness and instructions and everything with it. So it's complete in box. Great condition. Uh, I don't know if any of you have seen a an Atari Lynx game before or not, or but that's the actual the games and sends fairly small you can see you've got the connectors there so that slots into the side of the uh of the actual handheld console you close it up and away it goes so very similar to game boy or game gear games uh yes uh pretty ahead of its time uh i want to have a guess that maybe it was the price of the links that meant it didn't take off i don't know i could be wrong or who knows i'll have to have a look at that one we have Robo's Squash. Pin Gratuit. Which is a 1-2 to two player Lynx Up game as well. So you can have two players on this if you've got the Lynx. Now the back says, take the challenge of the multi-dimensional competition control. Aim your racket to deflect the ball as it comes at you. Hit exploding bricks and special items for power-ups. Miss the ball and you'll be splattered. You and a friend can links up for awesome two-player challenge, two-player comlinks capability. Had a quick go on this game. Uh, it's interesting. It's kind of like an Arkanoid type game where you obviously got to hit the blocks, but there's another bat at the other side that hits it back at you. So you got to do the. It's like an Arkanoid, Ar Arkanoid cross with tennis or pong, something like that. Uh, but you're looking from like a head down perspective so rather than it being uh, across from left to right it's from top to bottom when you're looking down so they tried to create like a, a 3d effect it's interesting uh interesting game i was not good at it i had a, a quick go and failed miserably but still nevertheless an interesting game uh, have a look we have kung food which is a the ultimate food fight mutant munchies from your freezer invade your kitchen your life and your world Speed and your martial arts skills are required to overcome the vicious veggies. Now this is still factory sealed, if you can tell. Uh, it's still got the, the, the factory seal on it and the, even the little uh, hanger that they put on the store. So I won't be opening that, won't be touching that. It's going to stay factory sealed because, you know, it's rare. It's a factory sealed game and I want to keep it that way. Uh, I don't plan on selling it, but it will be going in my cabinet for, for keeps. And then I've got Gates of Zendokon. Which is, the droids of your old nemesis, the evil spider Zendikon, captured you. Zendikon itself sentenced you to wander its web of deadly universes. The universes are connected by a web of transporter gates and alien bases. Find a transporter gate, fly through the gate into another universe. You will find allies in Zendikon's universe. Aliens held as slaves by Zendikon's minions will help you. If you can free them, they will follow your ship, aiding you with strange weapons unlike any you have ever seen before. Will you survive Zendikon's challenge? You must survive. Your reward for success is the chance for sweet revenge. A duel to the death of the evil spider itself. This is a fairly bigger box. And again, it's factory sealed. So this is a bigger Lynx video game box. It's not factory sealed, so I won't be opening that. Never going to play this again unless I get a, another cart uh, only or an open one. But yes, this looks like it's some kind of side-scrolling shoot 'em up you can see there from... Avoid the glare. Looks really interesting. Uh, but unless I get another copy of this game, I won't know for some time. If at all. So, now we continue. Also got a fair few... Uh, well, I picked up a... I picked up... I got another Jaguar game for Christmas. Now I can get my words out. And this... Yep, flip out. Yep. <laughs> I had accidentally bought this, not knowing that somebody had got me this for Christmas. Um, but luckily, this is a better condition box, so I can keep this neat and good condition. It's the same uh, flip out as the other one. So now I have two of these. And Kasumi Ninja for the Jaguar, which is awesome. And so what I'll do is I will 
keep this one in its box protector, look after it, keep it in good condition, and use the other one, because the box is in pretty good nick. Has all the instructions with it, all the innards, and so on and so forth, which is pretty cool. I got uh, two 32X games for Christmas, uh, both boxed, and that is 32X Metalhead, on the 32X, still in a decent box. So the back reads as, the country is in the hands of a revolutionary terrorist. And the World Federation Police have sent you in a metalhead trooper to crush the rebels, grab the controls, and unleash the full might of your attack robot to conquer the 3D texture map cyber jungle. So, like a, a 3D mech type game, you know, like a mech warrior type game, you run around in a giant robot attacking the bad guys. So, there we are, as you can see, if it's making it out on the camera, if it's focusing in, okay. But you can see like the, the 3D world that they've got on the 32X. Still boxed. Uh, this one doesn't have instructions with it. But that's not a problem because I got the same thing twice for Christmas. Metalhead again. This box is in better condition. And if you can see at the bottom there, we've got a, a Sega Knuckles uh, from Sonic and Knuckles on the bottom. You can read it. See it there? Telling people not to smoke. So uh, health advice on a video game, which I didn't really know existed these type of things but yes a smoking who needs it campaign on a sega game it looks like it's an official uh sega sticker as well so that's uh quite interesting to know that you know sega did things like that because i didn't know they did to be honest uh there we are now next up this is a game that i uh played as a kid and really enjoyed it me and my sister used to play this a lot in court mode it's known as having one of the best court modes uh, going for its time. It was really enjoyable. I used to play it on the Sega Mega Drive. Oh, the Mega Drive 2 I had at the time then. Uh, this is the Italian version on the Super Nin Nintendo, but it doesn't really matter because it's a PAL system. And the game's in English, it's, in, it's just a box. But that is Zombies. Or Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. No, it just says Zombies on the box, but it is Zombies Ain't My Neighbors, which is a brilliant kind of cheesy... B movie type <laughs> zombie horror game. You go around as one of two characters, uh, and you have to kill zombies. You use various weapons from water guns to uh, rocket launchers to grenades. There's all sorts on there. Uh, you've got to save the civilians from them. You get you go up against zombies, werewolves. Uh, I think J uh, a Jason Voorhees type characters in there. All sorts of different cheesy horror type things. I don't know if you can make it on the box in uh, fairly good nick as well the box there is no inlay for the game so it's just the cart but i have an inlay coming for that soon uh so i can get that in there hit the mic again do apologize and sort that out it was a really brilliant game which i'll be getting some time on and you can definitely expect to see this in a throwback tuesday do like this game it was awesome so, so you can see i've got plenty of throwback tuesdays coming up with uh, this collection of Awesome, awesome retro gaming goodies. Another game I uh, was got for Christmas. I uh, already have this game, but I don't have it boxed or complete. It was just a cartridge. Uh, it's an N64 game. Probably one of the most popular N64 games out there. And that is Zelda, or Legends of Zelda, The Ocarina of Time. So this is complete inbox instructions job lot, which is awesome. Really pleased to have got this. And uh, like I said, I've got the cart as well. So with this being in uh, really good nick, as you can see, the box isn't highly damaged at all. Uh, in fact, I still believe there's the Nintendo seal on one, is it? No, but it's still sealed on one side. But yeah, it's in great condition. So I'll keep this in good nick and just use the cartridge. Uh, never done really a, a, a throwback juice on Zelda or Crane of Time because it's such a big RPG style game. You wouldn't cover a great deal. Maybe one long video of it at one point. Who knows? Uh... Ocarina of Time was the f first game I used as a test game when I first started recording videos uh, on video game footage. Never actually did anything with it. Just did it as like a, a, a test thing uh, initially just to, so I could get the recording right on the Dazzle at the time. It's going back some time ago, but there we are. So now we're jumping back to the Jaguar, the Atari Jaguar, because I've got a couple more games for that. And these are in great condition. Really was impressed with these. Uh, one of, I've got... Again, which is a game which is on multiple platforms. Uh, it was on the Sega Saturn and the Mega Drive for sure. 
Switch, you know what I'm saying? I believe on the Super Nintendo. And this is considered the, or most people consider this the, the, the best console port that uh, is available. And that is Theme Park on the Jaguar again. You can see there's a, a little hologram there, which none of the others have got, which I thought was quite groovy. I uh, don't know what that is, whether it's because it's in the Atari Jaguar first person titles. I don't know. I'm guessing it, well, it can't be because it's a bullfrog game. But there you are. Theme Park on the Atari Jaguar. Never played this, but as you can see, keep hitting the microphone. I do apologize. As you can see, the uh, box is in great condition. All the manual and that is in there. To be fair, the manual doesn't even look like it's been read. It's in that good condition. There's a, a few screenshots at the back. You can make them out. So when that's focusing, I do apologize if it's not. But there we are. So you can expect a throwback on this as well, because I'm looking forward to having a look at this. There's uh, many people have heard this is an awesome port of Theme Park on the Atari Jaguar, and it's one of the few games that people really love on the Jaguar. Because to be fair, the Jaguar did get a lot of tosh. Number one I got before the Jaguar, itchy nose again, every time when I record, is Evolution Dino Dudes. Which uh, looks like a really wacky type game. Uh, to be honest, it looks a bit like Lemmings. I don't know if anyone's ever played Lemmings before. Uh, there we are. If you can make any of that out. But let's read the back here. It says, As the proud leader of Dino Dudes, it's up to you to lead your hairy band of crow magnums to the top of the food chain. Discover fire, weapons, the wheel, battle dinosaurs and rival, rival tribesmen. And do everything you can to survive, so your kids can someday invent cool stuff like malls, video games, and of course, the bacon double cheeseburger. Mm -mm. An evolutionary 64-bit experience like Nova. Become the dominant species using your wits and your dudes. 80 levels of Neanderthal puzzle adventure. A cave load of prehistoric enemies to battle, including dinosaurs and rival tribesmen. Tons of obstacles to overcome, including cliffs, boulders, and famished carnivores. Discover and master the use of fire, spears, ropes, and even powerful witch doctors. So maybe not so much like uh, Lemmings, um, but some kind of interesting puzzle type game nonetheless, I think, which should be interesting to look at. So expect a few Jaguar games coming up. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, we are coming to the end of my pickups, which nearly been uh, nearly half an hour, so it's a fair few pickups. This one for the 3DO, uh, it's an awesome game, I've played, it's a series of games, I've played one of these on the Super Nintendo I think, this one has, uh, it features large talking anthropomorphized cats, I think I said that right, as well as, I think it's uh, Andy Mc, uh, Ian McDowell is it, no? I, I can't remember his name, but uh, Mark Hamill, and I think the dude from Sliders, the scientist guy. Uh, the big, big one. Uh, is it Malcolm McDowell? That might be it. I don't know. The fella, anyway, because I know there is one of them in the, the Four Weddings and Funerals was a woman. I can't remember what the name is. Probably says on the back, but there. And it's for the 3DO, I should get to the point. And that is Wing Commander 3, Heart of the Tiger. Let's see if I can get away from the, the glare there so you can get a decent look on the 3DO. Which I'm really looking forward to playing this. Uh, I've seen a lot of the... Uh, Wing Commanders, I've watched a lot of them, and I, like I said, I've played one of the snares, which I really enjoyed, so I'm looking forward to giving this a go. Uh, let's have a look. Origins' latest and landmark puts Hollywood on the 3DO system with you as the star. Turn your 3DO system into a home theatre with Wing Commander 3 Heart of Tiger. Heart of the Tiger. For more than an action-packed space flight spectacular. Join an all-star cast that includes Mark Hamill, Malcolm McDowell, so he does say on the back, and immerse yourself in futuristic adventures that combine Hollywood movie making expertise with the adrenaline pumping gameplay of a space combat simulation. Where your actions will determine the eventual outcome in the final decisive showdown between the Terrans and the Kilrafi forces. For Fredo Dis hold a full speech, explosive sound, and interactive plot of over three hours of live action video images. Wing Commander Free Fredo uses 16 bit Dolby stereo surround sound, stunning synthetics. Synthetic. Sets, multiple camera angles, and completely interactive player control to bring space combat simulation to unparalleled levels of detail and cinematic realism. 
So yes, that sounds awesome. It looks like it's going to be, you know, I'm a big fan of the FMV style games from back in the past. And this is one of the, the, the biggies for stuff like that. The, the actual live action acting and stuff with video game mixed in. I've got the manual there. It still comes with all the leaflets and everything in. This is in great condition. Uh, it really is. I was really impressed when I saw this. Uh, especially seeing this because I'd never actually mentioned I wanted this to anyone. Uh, it's been a game that I've been after getting for some time, but just never got around to doing it. And I'm just trying to put this all back in the box here. I'll leave that to later. And the fact that it showed up, I was well impressed and well chuffed with that. So, down to the last few. Here we are, we actually have an up-to-date game. This is a modern game for the Xbox One, part of the Lego series, and that's Lego The Hobbit, which I believe will be the f second Lego game, sorry, I've played where the Lego characters speak, because I played the Marvel uh, Marvel Universe, Lego Marvel Universe on the PlayStation 4, really enjoyed that, and really looking forward to playing this. Obviously, you play through the story of The Hobbit, but all in the Lego world with the Lego cast voices and all that type of good stuff so that should be awesome looking forward to getting on that anyway, you might see a crazy horse play that one coming up soon who knows i also got a soundtrack a video game soundtrack for the halo wars which is awesome i always been a big fan of the halo music in the entire universe halo wars the game still haven't finished not so much of a big fan of that because you know it's a real-time strategy on a console and i just don't think they work that well but the soundtrack is still good so happy to have got that and last but not least, this is another game for the Sega Dreamcast, so this uh, helps boost that. And this is a game I've wanted for a while. It's kind of a must for anyone to have it in the Sega Dreamcast collection, and I haven't had it until now. But that is a complete copy of Shenmue on the Sega Dreamcast. So this is a game I've got to admit I've never played, but I've heard many people say many things about this. And it's in not bad condition. We've got the cardboard sleeve, and we've got both... I hit the mic in of the boxes. I never know, I might see a throwback on that or a, a rush hour or just a, a crazy horseplay, who knows? But that Shemu 2, that Shemu 2, Shemu on the uh, Sega Dreamcast, a game I'm really happy to have because it's kind of a must for your, your Dreamcast collection. And up until this point, I've never had it. So, really glad I've got that. Really glad. In fact, I'm happy or oh, just completely amazed with everything I've got over the Christmas period and before that. You know, the, the amount that I've got is just an obscene amount of uh, video gaming goodness this December. And I'm so chuffed to have all that. I want to thank everyone who bought me the Christmas presents. It really is appreciated. You're all awesome. And I want to thank you lot if you've stuck with me for this uh, nearly, nearly 35 minute video here of me dribbling about the stuff I got for Christmas and the stuff I've added to my collection. I want to thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to uh, click the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And why not hit the subscribe button as well. It would be greatly appreciated. It would help us so much, uh, you won't believe. And I want to thank everyone for watching as well. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, please feel free to head over to the site and check out the content we get up on there. We get stuff up on there as often as we can. And why not feel free to check out the Crazy Horse Gaming Forum. It's just sat there waiting for you guys to talk about video games, your collections. You can post pictures of your own collections up. Talk about game meets, what videos you watched, what uh, videos, movies you've watched, games you've played, books you've read, whatever you want. It's there. It's free to sign up. So why not go check it out? Uh, also, feel free to leave any comments in the comment section below this video if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, let us know if you've got any gaming goodies for Christmas. What did you get? Or any other just general geeky Christmas goodies you got? Feel free to leave that in the comments below. It would be greatly appreciated. And once again, I want to say a big thank you for watching. And I will catch you all in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.